it's Amaris here. My question for today is whose approval are you looking for? Whose approval are you seeking? I remember back in my wilder days <laughs> when I was still a drinking, drugging kind of crazy girl. What I like to do most after, uh, you know, late at night partying was have deep talks. People are very vulnerable and real um, often when they've had too much to drink. And so I just kind of loved delving deep into someone's soul when uh, they were really open and willing. And I remember having multiple conversations. Uh, two that come to mind were two different people. It was a guy and a girl. And they were actually, I think, on different occasions. It wasn't at the same time. Um, but the guy was sharing how his whole life he had been searching and trying to get his father's approval. And his father was a very successful businessman. And he was also trying to follow in his footsteps and be a different kind of businessman, but a successful one as well. And he said, I thought when I made my first million, my dad would be proud of me. And he said, and he couldn't care less. And it was just like this gut-wrenching thing he was sharing. And I just thought, wow, that, you know, I, I don't remember how the rest of the conversation went. And I then had um, a friend that was a girl and she shared similar late one night, how she felt like her father would never consider to pass down his business to her because she was a girl and that he only considered her brother. And that was so hurtful that, um, you know, she was a smart, good business woman in her own right, but how her dad would not even consider her because she was a girl. This is how she felt. Um, but so both of those conversations at that time in my life really struck me. And um, in my own growing up years, uh, my parents were told or taught that they should never mention appearance to their children. So uh, I come from a family of three girls and one boy. So all growing up, I was never told that I was pretty or attractive or, um, you know, you look cute or any of those things. They just never said that. Now, I don't know growing up as a kid if, if I noticed the lack of that. Um, I probably did. Um, but uh, they also just weren't really high on praise, period. And what's really fascinating, and this is a crazy story in itself, my dad did a missionary trip to China. And I recommend a book by Jackie Pullinger called Chasing the Dragon. This woman started this work in Hong Kong in the walled city there that basically was helping heroin addicts to kick heroin if they would submit and give their life over to Jesus and, um, and they wanted to kick heroin. Uh, she had this place for them where they would come and detox and part of the detoxing process and they didn't take any drugs or anything, which just people prayed for them 24 seven, every hour of the day while they were detoxing from heroin. Um, somehow, I don't know the whole story. It was, you know, over 20 plus years ago uh, that my dad went and he was a part of this situation. And so if you went and were a missionary there, part of your thing there was to pray. You had our shifts because they took, you know, people were on shifts praying all the time. So especially when you're having the late night shift, you know, from like 2 a.m. to 4 a.m., they give you lists of things to pray for um, because you probably need a little help uh, focusing, you know, your prayers. So one of the things was to pray to break family curses. So in China, family curses are legit. People actually curse people. Like, it's a thing that happens um, in lots of different countries. And so my father, when he was praying to break family curses in these people's lives, he started thinking about his own family curses. And, you know, it's a thing. You know, things generationally get passed down 
in families. And so what he realized is he grew up with his father never ever saying any positive things to him, never praising him, um, just there was zero. It just didn't happen. And that he had unknowingly, not meaning to, passed that same thing down in our family, that he had not praised us or encouraged us or given us positive affirmations. And so when he came back from China, um, we had a big family dinner. I remember it very vividly. We were all sitting around the dinner table. He shared this story and he looked each one of us in the eye and praised us and affirmed us and encouraged us. And he said, from this day forward, I want to break this family curse and I want to no longer be silent, but instead build you up and praise you. And he really has for me. He sends me wonderful texts about how uh, he thinks I'm a good mother and just wonderful things and very meaningful. And as a result, I probably maybe go overboard with my children. I do praise their appearance. Um, I try and tell them I love them and affirm them as much as I possibly can. And what's interesting is I think we all, you know, seek this approval. Um, you know, maybe I wouldn't have been such a wild child if I wasn't somehow in my own way rebelling. I didn't think that I could get my parents' approval when I was in high school uh, because I was not a very good student and my older siblings were excellent, you know, 4.0, straight A, full ride scholarship kind of students. So I, they had set the bar very, very high and I did not think that I could at all achieve that. Therefore, I did not try. Um, so I think in my own misguided way, I was seeking my parents' approval, but I think when my dad did that, it broke that in me. So then, you know, a few years later, when these people are pouring out their souls, saying how they just want their fathers to be proud of them, you know, it affected me all the more because I understood what it was like to have the love and approval of my father. And so in my scripture reading this morning, I was reading... And Jesus actually talks about, you know, his relationship with his father in heaven. And so it's obviously a struggle we all have in life. Um, you know, I mean, if Jesus talks about it. Okay, so John, where am I? John 6. Uh, I'm going to start in John 26. It says, Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. You are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the works God has required. Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So here they are asking Jesus, what must we do? What do we need to do to get God's approval? What do we need to do? And Jesus says, all you have to do is believe in the one he has sent. So Jesus says, all you have to do is believe in me. That's all you need to get God's approval. That's all you need to get God's approval is believe in Jesus. That's it. There's nothing you need to do. So then 630. So they asked him, what miraculous sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. It is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on, give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me and still do not believe. All the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. 
And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up on that day. So how cool is that? Jesus is the bread of life. All you have to do is believe in Jesus and not be looking for the bread that spoils. My children are currently seeking my approval on something. Um, Mama, you ain't gonna. Okay. Shh. Okay. Mess on my hair. okay. Water. Okay. So, okay. we don't need to be searching for earthly bread because it spoils. We don't need to be searching for our earthly parents' approval because, well, it's not the bread that satisfies. The only bread that satisfies is Jesus. All you have to do is believe. I mean, how is that for a laundry list? right? That's, yeah, and, and he's not going to lose any of them. I like that part. Anybody that calls on his name, anybody that looks for him, God is willing, ready, able to save, to, to bring with him into eternal life. Lord Jesus, help us to focus on your bread that lasts. Help us to stop searching for earthly bread. I don't know if you can hear my kids screaming in the background. But Lord Jesus, help us to focus our eyes on you and to believe in you, Lord, and to only seek you and your bread that lasts. In your name we pray. Amen.